everyone. I'm Julie. And I'm Jenny with a G. We're cousins and best friends. Who live on opposite ends of the country, so we decided to start a podcast. Welcome to Get Funny. <laughs> when we uh, recorded our last episode and we were going to take a hiatus and you were like, y'all, we'll be back in October. And I was like, don't tell them that because we will not. <laughs> I knew that the hiatus was going to be longer than we said it was. So I'm glad we kept those expectations low. It's always great to be low than high because. Correct. You never know. How thrilling that we're back, ladies and germs. And we have video components. I know. I know. know We have a new system. We're, we're, we're doing a new system. We're, we're trying things. Um, yeah, so it's December. What are we doing? What's new? Uh, I have my actual tree has been up, as everybody knows, for the last year. And, you know, it's one of those pre-lit trees and the lights decided to burn out oh. right in the middle. So I talked to some people. They said, there's no point in fixing it. Just buy more lights and then wrap it around the tree. So I guess yeah. that's what I'm going to do now. I, don't know. I didn't know it was a pre-lit tree. It is a pre-lit tree. So for those who perhaps are new to the podcast, welcome. Um, Jenny We're glad you're here. did something last year um, that she's been talking about for a while, but finally decided to just leave her Christmas tree up all year round. Sure did. Because it brought her joy. And I, I support that. I didn't know it was pre-lit. Do you think that all the work it did throughout the year made it tired? But the right, thing Christmas. is, it wasn't even lit most of the year. Like, oh, I that just was had it my up. Question. Okay. Right. Yeah. I just had it up. It's time to shine, per se, yeah. is yeah. December, November through December. And it just, it just stopped. So That's I sad. actually haven't had it lit in a while because I'm like, well, there's no point. It's still beautiful. But now. Yeah, I, (laughs) Richard and I put up our tree last weekend, and apparently when we took down our tree in January of this year, I guess, we had said, let's get rid of these current lights because we don't like them, and we're just going to get new lights for next year. And the thing about Richard and I is that neither one of us wrote that down. We didn't set a reminder, nothing. So when I go pull out all the Christmas stuff, I was like, oh, yeah, that's what we said. But we never went and got more light. <laughs> so um, I had to make a quick run to CVS and just got like whatever lights they had there. But he had wanted to like do some research and get some lights. And he was like, well, probably after research. Christmas, you're going to get them on sale and blah, blah, blah. It was a whole thing. And then I was like, yeah, that would have been great. Except we did not do that. Past <laughs> us was not looking out for future us. So. But our, not, our tree is up. It's it's working. It's whatever. It's not the best when past selves don't prepare future selves for things. No, no. But I'm glad. Wait, where do you have it? And just in the living room. You know where I, oh, girl, you know where I have like the majority of my plants by the uh, the patio door? Yes. I have a lot of plants over there. So things are different now. One thing that I've been doing the past few months, which I don't know if I told you about, is making these little IKEA greenhouses for my plants. No. What is an IKEA greenhouse? So <laughs> is it the IKEA gonna... bag or this is girl, no. Okay. I mean, so you don't have to it doesn't have to be IKEA, but IKEA has certain uh, glass and metal cabinets that people started using to make greenhouses for their plants. There's an Instagram account, literally, I think it's called IKEA Greenhouses or something. Oh, and Lord. I'd always wanted to try it, but the IKEA here is like kind of far and I wasn't sure. But in the past few months, I was thinking about like, oh, you know, maybe I'll just do it. And then, if you can believe it, I was walking the dog one day and on the side of the road, there was a glass cabinet. Not the side of the road. The side of the road. And it, it had a sign on it that said free. And I was like, what? Well, this is a great opportunity for me because that means I don't have to spend the money to buy the cabinet. And then I can just mess around, see if I like it. If I don't like it, well, I didn't pay for the cabinet. So the thing is that um, Richard was out of town when I found this on the side of the road. 
and I didn't want to leave it there and wait for him. He, he was wasn't going to be back for like two days. <gasps> There's so, no way it would have lasted. Yeah, long. someone else would have taken this cabinet. So I was walking the dog. I took the dog back home. Quickly got in the pickup truck that we have that we do oh, not yes. drive. <laughs> oh, yes. But I was like, well, this is the time when the truck comes in handy. So I drove back over to the street. It was still there. So I was like, okay. I tried to lift it. It is quite heavy. Um, also, did I mention this is a glass cabinet, which yes, at any yes, time yes. could shatter? Yes, glass and Somehow metal. I managed to get it into the the bed of the truck and I couldn't close the bed, but thankfully it was literally like a block. So I just drove really slowly and parked behind our building. But then the next thing was, how am I going to get this upstairs? Right, because you have, have plenty about... of stairs. Correct, correct. If you're new here, imagine, <laughs> <laughs> imagine climbing up to any cathedral in Europe. Wow. That is how okay. many stairs. Okay, it's not like that. It's just... 700 steps It's later. not even that many stairs here. It's just that the stairs feel disrespectful because they give you a little break. And then they're like, just kidding, more stairs. You're like, what? <sighs> As someone who has gone up those stairs from both buildings <laughs> accidentally, there's a lot of stairs. Go ahead. Yes. Keep going. Um, but yes, how so, would you yeah. have been able? Because exactly. it doesn't seem like Nash was helpful at all. No, the so. dog... No. He was more of a hindrance, to be quite honest. <laughs> so I was like... I don't, I can't take this up by myself. I'm famously very weak. Uh, Richard tries to get me to do manual labor. Like he'll like make me carry something with him. And I'm like, oh my God, this sucks. And I complain the whole time. Um, I'm very weak. You are a weak person. So, but strong what? in Excuse spirit. Excuse me. You're Hold on a second. Wait a, wait a minute. Wait. <laughs> now, You're why strong did you in say spirit. That? Why did you say it like that? <laughs> Why did you? You should not have agreed. You don't know that I'm weak. Sorry. Whatever. Whatever. Um, You're anyway. right. So I went through some, you know, different scenarios. I was like, I could just leave this in the truck. Most likely nobody's going to take this from the truck. And if they do steal it, it's not like I paid for it. Um, so that's what I was going to do. And then I started researching. I was like, I could hire a task rabbit. Oh, Girl, you know, this, I forget about them, even though we saw that whole movie. That about movie them. that was sponsored by TaskRabbit, um, Single All the Way. Single, yeah. I watched it uh, the other day. Again? What? Okay. It was just we'll something to do. Them. So, but again, a TaskRabbit would have been like 60, 70 bucks. And then I'd have to invite, look, I'm just going to say it. Most, most of the TaskRabbits are men. And I'm not trying to have men in my home when my partner's not here. Like, it's... Sense giving irresponsible and i wasn't <laughs> for it um so the last thing i decided to do which listen when i want something i will do everything i can to get that thing i got the tools and i took apart the ikea cabinet oh my god while it was, while it was in the bed of the truck and then i had to bring up at almost each individual piece because it's these huge glass panels. Now I feel like I need to look this up. What does it look like? <laughs> like you imagine, right now I'm imagining you like um like Jack and the Beanstalk, right? Like you're okay, little it's not, tiny it's... and it's this big thing. And I'm like, how did you how did you get there? It's not like that. Also, I will say the cabinet was on its side in the truck. So it wasn't like it was super tall. But um, I'm sending you a link to the cabinet just so you can see it. Please. <laughs> Is it um, this thing? Outrageous. It's just a lot of glass. It's really just the awkward glass panels bringing it up all my stairs and such. Um, but then I okay. did it. You did? I mean, I'm sure. I eventually put it together and now I have my plants in there and Wow. I'm monitoring their humidity, their lights. I got them on a timer. It's a whole thing. <laughs> All of that long story to say that I now have my Christmas tree where the plants usually are. Gotcha. In Thank a you. greenhouse a that you got there. for free. How Ikea wonderful. Greenhouse. Remember how you went to the White House? <gasps> oh my God, I did. That was in the time that we've been on hiatus, right? Yes, yes. That was October 19th, year of our Lord, 2022. And I'll never forget. It was great. And I met 
Dr. Jill Biden. And I told her she was incredible and wonderful and everything. And I got a selfie with her and it was so cool. Like she's so pretty. And it was cool. Like they invited me to come speak about like life as a Latina in Georgia and just things that they should be uh, knowing about and, you know, making sure I was using my voice for those who aren't at the White House, right? Like a great opportunity, like to literally talk about community members and the work we're doing for my job. So it was dope. Go ahead, like, you. I, I can come back here, you know, if they invite me or whatever. <laughs> but the funny part about life, y'all, is that I had been invited to the White House two times prior and was not able to go. And I was like, I cannot be known as somebody who declines White House invitations. That seems kind of crazy. But, uh-oh. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, it was pretty amazing. Everybody was really nice. But we, only, we were there for such a short period of time. But I did bring back a White House coffee cup and White House sugar and <laughs> White House sorry, what- coffee holder. What is White House sugar? It's just Wait. regular sugar. When you say White House coffee cup, do you mean a mug or a plastic, a paper cup? Uh, my it's like styrofoam. It's like styrofoam. Does it say but White House on it? It does. It's oh, there. okay, that's good. It says White House on it. Everything that said White House, I took it. This is a funny story that I didn't tell you about your White House trip. Um, I was talking to my mom after, you know how our moms are crazy, right? Yes. Um, so you wore, I don't know if you wore a dress, but you wore a red coat, right? What were you wearing? You wore red. Yeah, I was wearing red. Yeah, I was wearing red. My mom was like, I saw Jenny. She looked good. She was wearing red though. Do you think she should have worn blue? I was like, mom, I don't think, um, I'm pretty sure Democrats can wear the color red. Like, it's not limited to Republicans. Oh this my. isn't like a blood and Crips thing. Oh like, and she, she was really like, oh, I wonder if, you know, like, she was being offensive by wearing red. I'm like, mom, this isn't a gang war. What are you saying? I was only um, being offensive that I didn't show more of my red I outfit. Cause... thought it was really funny that she said that, though. That is hilarious. Yeah. I mean... Did I think it too? Yeah. I was like, should I wear blue or red? But when the opportunity came to purchase something within hours of finding out, I just purchased the first thing I saw. Yeah. and It was again, a dope red outfit. Democrats Actually, are allowed to wear red. <laughs> right. Um, should we move on into yes. our Yes. St. Tom's discussion? Street. Yes, let's let's do it. Seen on screen, obviously, holiday special come through my favorite time of year. How many crazy and bland holiday movies can I watch? All of them. That's the answer. How many All have you them. watched this year? All of them. All of the new ones that have popped off on Netflix and Lifetime, I've seen them. Uh, I have not seen any on Hulu yet, but that doesn't mean that they're not coming. Uh, I've seen them all. This is my first one. <gasps> my Lindsay Lohan one I thought that one was a good one actually I heard that one was better oh I don't know if we've mentioned it but um, this episode this season this year what is what am I saying we watched the Netflix Christmas movie called Christmas with you Christmas from 2022 I, the thing is what Oh, it rhymes. So Christmas with you, y'all, is um, it's basically marry me, the the J Lo film marry me, but Christmas, <laughs> but and Christmas. without J Lo. A little holiday down, sprinkle. Yes, down to the, uh, the famous pop star, famous Latina pop star, falls for a humble school teacher. Um, in in Marry Me, that was Owen Wilson. In Christmas with You, that is Freddie Prince Jr. And I'm just gonna say it here, y'all. Whatever I say today, I just want you to know that the hold that Freddie Prince Jr. had over me as a child cannot be overstated. I was a huge fan, I had a huge crush on him, like many I think young girls at the time. Freddie Prince Jr. and Josh Hartnett were 
oh, chef's Josh kiss. Hart, dude. Love it. Love them. So to see my man, Freddie, <laughs> my in man. this way, um, what is what would the Freddie Prince Jr. hive be called? <laughs> Wait. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, okay, wait, wait, wait. This is a little this is gendered, so it it wouldn't work, but for me it does work. The princesses. <laughs> you do you get it? I got it. Received. Thank you. Thank you. Or it's fine. Oh, I'm gonna go with princess. <laughs> uh <laughs> Why do we need to go anywhere with this? Yes. So it, we're to see him like this. Um, we're down bad, y'all. It was we're down bad. We as a collective. I don't know what you want to say about this film. I... <laughs> <laughs> okay, y'all. Okay, so first, uh, I'm more surprised. Okay. When we first saw the movie trailer, this was a while ago. I want to say it was October. No, we may have seen the trailer. They were promoting it or whatever. And both Julie and I were like, wow, Amy Garcia is really in her 40s. Like, it's weird because Amy Garcia still looks young. And I'm like, but she is young. But she is an adult woman of a career. She has had it plenty. So it was distracting because... Freddie Prinze Jr. also looks so much older than he really is, right? Like, he is still young, is too. He, here's the thing. Okay. I will say, I don't necessarily think that he looks older than he is. I think she looks so much younger. They were mismatched. Like, literally, when I saw the trailer, I first was, like, appalled because I was like, ew, why are they doing this big age gap romance? And then I had to Google them and found out that there's literally like a three-year age difference, a two-year age difference between them, which is insane. And that's fine. Like some people look different at the same age, but you don't put those people together in a movie. <laughs> like, I guess that's, so. Like, the casting didn't work. It didn't work. I also didn't think that they had that much chemistry. Like They had zero. It was, just, it was negative chemistry. Yeah. I was just like, what is happening? So as Julie said earlier, pop star finds the way that she gets to the humble man. He is the father of a young daughter who is going to have a quinceanera. And so she reaches out on social media to Amy's character and tells her, this song was sang to me every day before my mother passed away. And so for the whole movie, we hear how much this young girl loves this song sung by Amy's character. I can never remember their name, so I'm not even pretending. Her name is Angelina. 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 Yeah. It was interesting. My other take on this is, I mean, it's hard because... I love new stories. I love people being very adventurous and saying like, oh, here's a Latino story. Obviously, every Latino story is going to be as Mexican leaning as possible. I get it. Sure. So there's a lot of traditions that I did not have with my Dominican family. But like, y'all cannot be serious with having every other word be in Spanish just randomly. I just feel like it just, it's just not either you're speaking Spanish or you're speaking English, but every single word, pasa me the paper, para hacer a song juntos with my amigos. Like what? Let's, what are we let's doing Let's go here? to the casa. Jeez. <laughs> Sorry, what? That's the problem. I, they de- it's like they never... No, I feel like no movie or TV show has gotten Spanglish correct. Right. And like, like Spanglish is a thing, but it doesn't work like that. And that's the thing. Again, I've asked people to like, is this common in your family? Because it's not common in mine. We're either speaking English, where my f- parents are asking me something in Spanish and I respond in English, or I'm responding in Spanish. And I just feel like I saw another movie the last weekend too. I don't remember what it's called. I think it's Texmas. And it had a character who didn't even speak English. And I thought that was pretty cool. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like you can do that. Like they did in uh, Jane the Virgin. You can have characters who don't necessarily speak the language uh, of English. 
I also didn't think that, you know, it felt like it was being pushed. And now, you know, I am a Christina Aguilera fan. I have talked about it on this podcast before. I just feel like Christina Aguilera about two weeks prior had released a song in Spanish and people were coming for her in the comments, especially on, on Instagram. That's where I saw it, where she's not Latina enough. And I really, really, really hate that because Christina Aguilera has never de denied being half Latina. Like she's never denied that. But there's this weird social thing that Christina Aguilera is not Latina enough. And her singing in Spanish is her pandering to the Spanish speaking community. Meanwhile, Freddie Prince Jr. has literally never played a Latino in his film. But when he talks about how Latino he feels, because it is part of his culture, people were praising him like, oh, my God, Freddie Prince. Now, you know, his father was an actor. If you, also this is just another thing. All these social media things, y'all people are acting like everything is brand new because you just heard about it. Do you all not Google? Are you all like smoking too much that you're forgetting stuff like these are not new occurrences. And if I see one more post about people saying, did you know Lupita is Mexican? I'm oh, going to cry. Man. Like y'all <laughs> got to stop doing these breaking news when we know, already know this stuff. So all that to say, beautiful opportunity to be a cute little Christmas movie, but I just didn't have a connection to it. I didn't think the story was that good. I didn't think the song was that good. Girl, no. So let, just let me do the thing. Where I break down the movie, even though I hate it, I'll tell you the plot. I'm sorry. Uh, let me just say, I don't hate this movie. I just, <laughs> I, I want to acknowledge that I know people worked hard on this movie. Right. I know. I just, there are things that could have been better. So, as Jenny mentioned, Amy Garcia plays this pop star. She, the pop star in the story, toured with J-Lo when she was 15. And so she's like, you know, this famous whatever. But she is now aging out and her record label is like, you need to make a Christmas hit. Mind you, it's like two weeks before Christmas. <laughs> like, how is she going to put this out? <laughs> they want her to write, record and release a song in time for Christmas. A new original a, so Christmas. she can't, she's been blocked because her mom died, which she will mention 5,000 times in this film. Um, similar to the daughter, Christina, is that her name? Christina. Couldn't tell you. She, her mom also died, which they talk about constantly and not in an organic way. They'll just be talking about the weather and they're like, well, you know, it's hard for me to be around snow because my mom died. <laughs> like, what? Stop, <laughs> Stop <I> it. <laughs> no. That's not a thing. Also, also, I don't want to laugh because I know that grief is different for people. So I want to recognize Yes, Jenny. That, but... Obviously, I know that. Like, I'm a human. I know I've had, you know, I've grieved before. But, like, this is, I am not in a movie. And people in movies <laughs> should not be so fucking weird <laughs> like why are the you bringing this reminds up me of her the way that she it used to caress my hand but then also did it the mom also pass like when the ch the child was very young like i don't know what I, I truly don't know the timeline of when the child when freddie prince jr's ex or not ex sorry but when freddie prince jr's wife died he is a widower i don't know when she died I feel like the pop star's mom died more recently than the other person's mom died. I don't know, but <laughs> uh, I can't. So anyway, Amy Garcia needs to write a pop song, a Christmas song. And she can't, she's lost her mojo because she's sad and whatever. It's so she see, she's going through the hashtag of one of her songs on social media. She sees that Christina, this young girl, posted the video of her singing the song and she decides that she's going to surprise that girl at school, which is very weird. They just let people weird. into schools. It, right. And on top of that, well, it's Angelina, I guess, but it seems weird. You just took her out of learning time to talk about. She's a song. just acting so weird when she gets to school. Right. But uh, anyway, so she goes to the school, she meets Christina and her father, who is a teacher at the school. Her father, 
Freddie Prince Jr.'s name is Miguel in this. So Miguel is a father. <laughs> um <laughs> and he's a music teacher. First through some random occurrence of events, Angelina and her manager who travels with her, who is acting like an assistant, but she's actually her manager, which is weird. Right. They get snowed in, and so they spend the night with this family. Which is weird. I just want to I just want to keep weird. saying it is very weird. How it's weird. this happens every time it's because weird. the other part is like don't get on the road but come home with us. Yeah, how like it's too dangerous. Drive? It's too dangerous to drive. I'm like, well, how's she get into your house then? What are you talking about? I don't get it. Um, so they stay there, they bond, whatever. What's her face? Angelina is super weird about food. I feel like we don't acknowledge that she ha- yeah. Loki has an eating disorder in this. Right, right. Content and that's the other part. Disorder. Because I was like, okay, when the movie started, there's a scene where she literally is like, I can't eat anything but lettuce. Lettuce. Like, not she's even on a salad. lettuce diet. She's on a lettuce diet and she's like doing like um like crunches or whatever while she's preparing for this this thing. And the whole thing is about her body. And I'm like, I thought we were past this, y'all. It's it's a movie in 2022 where a obviously ridiculously thin woman is talking about being on a diet and no one around her is really calling her out on it. They're just like, girl, you so crazy. Like the, the but, grandma was the only one who said something. She's like, you yes. better eat my food. So when yeah, so when they're at the, you know, the regular people's house and they give her food, she's like, Oh, no, thank you. And she's still weird about it, but no one brings it up again. Um, like, I don't think she ate she, again. She, she eats like a bite and literally never comes up again. Like I thought maybe they were gonna like have her realize that she could stop starving herself and would no. be fine. But no, never at all. To be successful, you must be thin and hungry all the and time. And hungry and just be on a lettuce diet. Um uh, except for when she's eating Freddie Prince Jr.'s pozole, which they kept talking about the pozole. I was like, all right, we get it. He's supposed to be we Mexican. Um, and and then she gets super drunk. She's like, I can't believe I got drunk with grandma. You don't eat, girl. How do you, you don't eat? So in this time, so Angelina, this is going to be out of order because I don't care enough to say it in order, but Angelina tells Miguel or somehow it comes out that she's got to write this song and she's really struggling with this one part or they both start struggling. Like he's, he tries to help her because he has a piano and they're like, what is the lyric? Like, what what can we put there? Because he's a piano they, teacher. He's a, <laughs> is he a piano teacher or a music yeah, teacher? Yeah, a music piano teacher. Is that a no? music, Sure. He's, turns out he's been working on a song too. And um, <laughs> what? They, they're just stuck. So they go on like a little winter adventure and they're sitting on a bench and suddenly they come up with the melody or something. And they're like, oh, the lyric is there can't be no Christmas without you. We did it. It took you it took you this long to come up with that lyric? Well, you know, I was stuck with the whole like why she there's a lot of conversation about of creativity, but there's not enough lawyers and contracts involved. <laughs> I was like, she's he's gonna get played and then she's gonna get real upset. This movie was yeah, weird. She's like, let me um take this hardworking man song and just take it to the top of the charts i don't know but we're supposed to think that they're falling in love during this time right they do no work to show us that they are falling in love because there's no chemistry there's no chemistry so i just realized this is a pg movie which oh is that what it was (laughs) yeah um And that's... I think that's why it feels like kind of sanitized and like there are, it is. I'm sorry, are they brother and sister or are they love interest? What is they happening? They literally were giving cousins who just met for the first time. Yeah, I was gonna say at, like not even know? not even a close relative, like no, uh, just like that distant relative you haven't. Seen I just years. I didn't see it, and then also how fastly bonds with the child who's planning this quinceanera. And she's like, "Will you be part of my quinceanera?" Okay, let's talk. <laughs> let's talk about the quince. Because, also, there's going to be loud noises in the background. I don't know if you can hear it, but whatever. I can so, hear it. 
what's her face christina is, is planning her kids in, which is going to be like the week before christmas or some shit right it is very close to christmas right now it is close enough to christmas in this movie that all the christmas decorations are up that is important because that means the quince is also close how is it she doesn't have a dress yet they literally go dress shopping right. girl what your quince is in a week She's ale- apparently inviting people to her quince by word of mouth. Like, can you do an evite, a paperless post or something? You're just telling people about your quince that doesn't make any so sense bad. at all. It's just so bad. Um, And then they have the rehearsal, which is so weird. And uh, what's her face? Angelina like tries to show them the choreography. And it's just, it's so awkward and upsetting. And I hate it. And then at the end, when blah, 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 spoiler alert, the song is a hit. Angelina performs it at some event and she makes Freddie Prinze Jr. uh, Miguel come on stage with her, even though he's like, I don't want to go on stage. And she's like, (laughs) fuck your boundaries. Come on stage with me. Puts him on the spot, makes him play the piano with her for a song that doesn't really need a prominent piano because it's a pop song. (laughs) Like, what are you talking about? This isn't an Adele song, girl. Like, this is a top 40 pop synthesizer song so the whole thing was so bizarre because oh then he's like obviously we're gonna be together forever i'm like wait were you yes, watching the christmas yes. movie too wait it was Hold it on. doesn't make any sense because how did we get there suddenly they go from like we just wrote this christmas song together and we have maybe exchanged one look that could possibly be interpreted as romantic if you squint to They do the performance, and then after the performance, she's like, I gotta go, because they just told me I'm gonna be on SNL or whatever, and he's like, you're leaving us? Right. And and I'm like, wait, what do you mean? What do you mean you're leaving us? She's gotta go do her job, sir. And he goes, he goes, this was, so this was just about the song to you? And she goes, mind you, she's thinking, no, it wasn't, but she's like, "Uh, yeah, totally, just about the song. Sir, if it was just about the song, that would be okay because what else would it be about? Right. You've known each other a week's time, maybe. And on top of that, the it's a quinceanera versus SNL. Like, I get that the quinceanera matters to you and your daughter, but this woman who has a career in entertainment should not have to be balancing should I go to a quinceanera or the SNL and then finding out that the quinceanera is like back basically in a garage like y'all relax okay so the quinceanera yeah the this sort of moment of them you know breaking up or like us figuring out like will they or won't they get back together will will love be enough it wasn't believable because there was no love like why is he so upset we're supposed to think that she's being selfish, but like she's done nothing because there's no romance here. What are you saying? And so then the quince happens. Spoiler alert. This whole thing is a spoiler, but she, um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. She decides not to do SNL. She surprises Christina at the quince by coming out when Christina and her court are about to do their dance cut to Angelina hijacking the whole thing and just surprising them with a dance and a performance and everyone's excited but I'm like what are you you should have run this by her I feel like you just kind of upstaged her at her own party and this is similar to Beauty and Baker where the beauty did the same thing you have it no okay well so at the end they I think they share a kiss which is like so yeah upsetting it, it's not it's not a good kiss. <laughs> but um we finally see and now remind me if we've seen this before this man before because or this child because what I, the way i watched this movie was i watched almost all of it the first hour with richard we got tired of it <laughs> um and we were like we'll just watch it later we'll watch the rest later we literally had 25 minutes left and so then i watched the last 25 minutes like two weeks after the fact. So I don't remember if we met her love interest before um, Christina's love interest, the guy she has a crush on. And she keeps saying like, should I invite him? Is he going to come? Do you remember this? Oh yeah. Uh uh Did we meet him before? I think he may have been at the school, like 
when they okay. were calling her to the principal's office or something. Well, when he saying. shows up, because at yeah, the, they did at ask the him. Yeah, he shows up at the quince, and I was like, I'm sorry, this generic ass Wonder Bread white boy is the guy she's been mooning over this Get entire out. movie. <laughs> what are we doing here? What are we teaching our children? Honestly. One thing that you and I briefly mentioned, because I, I talked about how much this annoyed me um, when we had a phone conversation last week, but I just want to say it here. Freddie Prince Jr.'s wardrobe in this film. <laughs> he, <laughs> oh my he, God. He, his character dresses like he had weight loss surgery, lost yeah. a bunch of weight, but doesn't feel like buying new clothes. Which is fine if that were the case, but it's not. All of his clothes were ill-fitting, oversized. Like, there's in the last scene, or one of the last scenes where they do the big performance at the gala or whatever, he's in a tux that looks like he just stole it from someone because right. it was not fitted in any way. And my thing is, maybe they didn't have the budget for his wardrobe. Maybe they spent it all on Amy Garcia's wardrobe. But even if they didn't, maybe. they could have... They could have had Freddie just wear his own clothes, which I feel like would have fit him better than whatever they put him in this in this film. I truly still am having difficulty understanding why he looked like such a slub. When, <laughs> I mean, they did him so wrong. And then so he's wrong. surprised that Amy Garcia Angelina is not interested in more than just the song. Like Honestly, dude, that's the energy you were giving. Like you were you were giving up Willow energy, honestly, and that's not attractive. Like he's Freddie Prince Jr. is an attractive man. I've seen him do an interview from within the past month. I know he still looks good, but the way they did him in this movie, the makeup would look like it was done by a mortician. Like, right. I was like, what are you is he very His ill? Is that a plot off. point? <laughs> like, and I was like, is he gonna smile more? Like it just felt like he was annoyed. Was he annoyed making this film? He definitely felt like his character just like wandered into this movie and like didn't know what was going on. And, like I get that you know we're trying to have it's all fantasy, right? But like, let's stop with the pop Whose star lady is, is always going to try to find like some regular schmegular Joe off the. Joe Schmo off the street. I just, I don't get it. It's a lot. It was Marry Me Christmas edition, but not even as good as Marry Me. I think Marry Me was actually funny. There was some Marry Me poetry. There were some moments in Marry Me that were funny. Yes. This movie, I did not laugh. Well, I laughed at their weird dialogue, constantly mentioning their dead moms. Um, I did laugh at that, but I don't think I was supposed to laugh at that. No, I don't think um, so either. In hindsight, seems like it seems like a serious moment. Yeah, I was, I had been excited for this movie to be honest, and I I told Me some too. friends that I was watching it, and it was a little disappointing, and they're like, "Well, what did you expect?" And I was like, "I expected better, honestly. Maybe that's my bad. Uh, clearly, it is my bad. Clearly, I mean, it should not be wrong to expect good." And, like, I'm, you know, I love that it's a, like, Latino Christmas movie, but it's not giving. Are they fighting over there? Girl, you know what? I don't know what is happening in the alley. I think they're doing some work. There's always some landscapers out there. Hooting and hollering. Hooting. They're carrying on. Dang. They're carrying on. We're but recording a podcast, okay? Sir. Anyway. um, So... The movie happened, I guess. I mean... I don't recommend that anyone watch it, to be honest. There's so many Christmas no. movies you can watch that probably have better chemistry between the leads. Right. You don't need to watch this. Even watching any on Lifetime muted will have more chemistry when, <laughs> than the real. Just putting it out Yeah. There. I feel like I need to watch another Christmas movie to, like... Because this can't be the only one that I watched this season. No. And you just, said the Lindsay Lohan one is better? It's better, yeah. The Lindsay Lohan one, I will say I laughed at that one. And I also, the fashion was top tier. I was okay. like, oh, what is Lindsay back? Oh my God. Good excited for her. for her. I'm actually excited Good for her. It was cute. Her. There, there's also a little kid in this too, because everybody is a, is a single dad, apparently. 
That's all we're uh, Just a single dad who works two jobs. <laughs> <laughs> who loves his kids and never stops. Oh, man. Oh. Um, well, I, you know, thank you for, for watching this and talking about this with me. Because always. You know, y'all, I'm we always... were not going to, we were not going to do another episode in 2022. We were going to do this in January. And I was like, y'all, we got to do a Christmas movie. We gotta do a and holiday. here's the thing. I will watch all the movies. So I it de- I mean, for me, <laughs> it worked out because I watched like four of them in a row. So yeah, I no I regrets. don't do that, but uh, I'm going to have to watch another one maybe today. Um, yes. Yeah. All right. Well, okay. Well, that was fun. <gasps> uh watch it if you want to but if you have other plans do those uh <laughs> obviously <laughs> don't uh, definitely don't cancel plans to stay home and watch <laughs> this netflix original film who uh, anybody does think of doing that don't don't do that y'all don't. that's crazy <laughs> Um, all right. Well, then let's go into our favorite part. Well, all of it's my favorite because I get to talk to you. But Aww. what did you find on the internet? On Al Gore's internet? Um, well, we have some Am I the Assholes. Oh, my favorite. I know. And I have not read these. Ooh. Am I the Asshole? For refusing to accept a Christmas gift from a coworker. Ooh. All right. So, this one's short. That's why I'm reading it. <laughs> My colleague is a racist, misogynistic, misogynistic narcissist. Ooh. I could go into detail, but other than the fact that I have to work with him, I don't want anything to do with him. That is fair, I feel. He purchased everyone in our department a 12-pack of craft beers for Christmas. I returned his gift, saying I couldn't accept it. Apparently, I made a faux pas because now others in our department are saying I acted out of line. I countered that by accepting the gift, I feel complicit in his behavior. Edit. I did this in front of our coworkers when he was handing out the beer. Edit number two. Maybe narcissistic is the wrong term. Bully might be better. Am I the asshole? Immediately, I would not assume you're the asshole because you said it. Um, like, you don't have to receive anything from anybody. Like, that should be standard. Um, and also, not for nothing, I would also give it back because I don't want to know this person. I don't mm-hmm. want to have that connection with them. And I don't drink beer. So, for me, it's best that you did say that you don't accept it. Your coworkers need to chill out. Yeah. So apparently the person who posted this gave more info and some replies. They work in a construction company or something. Mm -hmm. And apparently he constantly throws coworkers under the bus, gossips about others, not doing their jobs, invited everyone over to his house to play cards, except the two African, African Americans and the Hispanic in our department. I'm white constantly makes jokes about how women shouldn't be in this field showed porn on his computer with women nope. in the room Absolutely and wormed not. his way out of losing his job with the union. Girl! This know. man sounds terrible. Like, no, you're good Honestly, to not. not accepting his beer is, like, the least thing you can right. do. I would actively be trying to get him fired. Like, Absolutely. What? No. No? Mm-hmm. No. Nothing. Okay, well, this one says, am I the asshole for having my coworker fired? <coughs> A little Is counterpoint. I <laughs> know, <laughs> right? I, I don't know. I haven't read it. Am I the asshole for having my coworker fired? I, 19 female, have been working at my job as a cashier slash cook at Taco Bell for six months now. I love my coworkers. We, we have a very warm and friendly environment. Most of my coworkers express themselves and are very blunt, which is why I love this job so much because it was different than all my other jobs. A few weeks ago, we were closing and I was asked to help one of the newer coworkers close her drawer. She had been here for two and a half weeks at this time, and the money came up short. Being that she was using the drawer, the responsibility would have fallen on her and our other coworker who uses the headset to take orders. Uh, being that I just got promoted as a shift leader manager, I was asked to recount the money and to be certain that the funds were low. I confirmed that there was money missing, so that night I put a note asking the general manager, my boss, to call me in the morning. 
The next afternoon, my boss called me and we discussed it. I told her that the new employee had to have taken the money since she was the only one who I, I watched accept cash from customers at the window. Although I was unsure, I couldn't risk losing my position as it would have appeared to the other managers that I didn't know what was going on under my own watch. A few days later, I was informed she was taken off the schedule and asked to give her uniform back. Um, I feel terrible for not double checking because I went back because when I went back, I saw the $25 stuck behind the coffee maker that's never used or looked behind. So it's clear that she dropped it. However, I can't bring myself to tell my boss since I don't want to lose my job either. Am I the asshole? Oh, girl. Mm, 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 mm. That is messed up. I think that if you do not bring it up to your boss, you are an asshole. Yes. I'm not saying that your boss is going to rehire this girl, but at the very least, you should bring it up so that she could use this as like a reference at least, or like, like she's going to have this negative experience on her, you know, very, probably very short resume right now. And it could follow her when she's trying to get other jobs. So at the very least, you should come clean so she doesn't have this following her around. That's really shitty. It is very shitty. Um, Super shitty, particularly because the double checking part kind of confuses me because she said she counted it again. So where did you find... I feel like there's something missing here because like, where would you find that $25 and apparently it was behind the coffee maker that no one ever looks behind but I don't see, know that's why she I'm didn't saying. look behind it before right like it doesn't make any sense you didn't look behind it because why would you look behind you see what i'm saying like as somebody as as i'm trying to listen to this how if nobody looks behind there why would you even secondly how was it only 25 dollars? because wouldn't you need to give change out like it's $25 short. Seems like someone did take the money and then dropped mm. it trying mm. to hide it. You see what I'm saying? Like, mm. it, it all seems a little weird. I will say my biggest asshole part about this is the corporation of the way that they handle things like this. Because if she's only been trained for two weeks, I do think that there needs to be a little bit more forgiveness in jobs yes. like that. And there seems to not be. So, Yes, you're an asshole, comma, because now you work for the man who is the bigger asshole. So, and it's Taco Bell. Like, $25 right. must have been at least 40 orders. Like, it doesn't make any <laughs> sense to me. So, like, you do need to tell somebody. And also, that's really messed up. Like, all of it seems a little funny to me, though. A little fun. Yeah, little fun. it's. It's very shitty. And I agree that the like general manager should not have like you, especially if someone hasn't even been there a month and they're short, you don't fire them for that. Even if they've been there for a long time and they're short, like sometimes things happen. I have worked retail jobs, jobs with cash registers. Sometimes it happens, but you don't jump to firing the person, especially because I feel like a lot of these jobs, especially nowadays, have cameras and they can watch their employees and they see what they're doing. But, like, nobody is trying to steal $25 from Taco Bell, y'all. Right. And if they are, it's because you're not paying them enough and you probably should keep them on. Listen, I'm going to... See, I hate when when employees at, like, an hourly thing, or even any corporation, to be honest, they think that they're doing the job, the company a favor. Like, it's their responsibility to save the company every little piece of money or time or whatever. I'm like, listen... Mr. Taco Bell is not going to come give you a pat on the back. Like, right. Ronald the McDonald's people, does not give a shit what you're doing. I have said this before, but when you have the smallest amount of power, it seems like you have the most power. Oh my Y'all, God. The folks that don't give us an extra sauce with the nuggets. It... I knew you were about to bring up the sauce. I just, I knew you were. Um, I mean, what are it's you doing with your camera? I'm trying to recenter it again. Like you sometimes can't. it helps. You can't. Sometimes um, it helps. No, no. Um, I yeah, you're so right. The I had another. Am I the asshole? But I won't even bring it up right now because you just said sometimes people with the least amount of power sort of abuse it the most. Have you seen that thing about the nurses at Emory? Yeah, I said Emory. Mm-hmm. 
Yep. Listen, I, first of all, do not like how many of those nurses were women of color. Because I'm like, y'all mm. really should know better. Um, especially in Atlanta, where I feel like a lot of the women who are coming to give birth there are black women and the maternal mortality rates are so high already. Like, it's all disgusting. It makes me so upset. But I saw something not too long ago. I don't remember where I saw it, but it was like uh, the same type of people who are excited to be nurses are the people who want to be cops. Like, not all of them, obviously, not all nurses, but nurses are the cops of white women i think um, and Damn. and they don't have to be white. you know what <laughs> i've just i've never heard this before um well you know it's, it's true though and, and i don't mean obviously some nurses are great guys i know this i know this um i don't think all nurses are bastards this isn't an a cab situation <laughs> but almost maybe a but it just seems nab. like if you get in a position a nab where you want to have control over people it seems like being a nurse is just like the perfect opportunity for you because you get to control like you have control over people's pain like you literally can choose whether to give them drugs or not like you can choose whether to make them comfortable in their pain or not and if you're the kind of person who gets off on that well there you go there's the job for you and so I'm glad that these nurses are getting fired because how dare you? So I would say pretty much for any service job and particularly in medicine, it's a lot of work to, to get to where you are. And it's real messed up because the ick for folks who don't know what this video was, it was a series of nurses saying what they didn't like about their job, their icks of their job, but the things that they didn't like were actual parts of normal interaction with patients. They and like, these jobs, these are labor and delivery nurses. Labor and, yes. And major, um, a majority of them were Black women. And they were saying, like, when they asked, like, can I take a shower when they get here? Like, no. Like, what? When they asked if they could have something to eat. When they come to the nurse's desk asking for a blanket. Like, these are literally normal things. And the reaction of people who have, like, responded with, I was at that hospital. I almost died. I did not get, mm-hmm. you know, respect. Like, it is it is very clear that there has to be a complete upheaval of how you interact with people, particularly Black women. The mortality rate is entirely too high. And for you to say that you, you don't even feel comfortable asking a nurse to get you something when you need it, when that's what you're told. When you walk in, they say, if you need anything, let us know. It, it is very daunting, especially because... I've not gone to the hospital a lot, but there are choices that you make that you tend to try to go to hospitals that are private, that are a little bit more, that have more resources because you think you're going to be treated better. Like that's just the reality of it. And these nurses really went in and just lost their jobs. They're all fired. They might not get another job, but we're also in a nurse shortage, right? I was going to say, they probably will. They probably will. (laughs) And so- it's really frustrating. And then on top of that, this is another video I've seen. And I don't know if you've seen this one, but it's a mom who cuts her, her teenager's hair off. No. Have you seen that one? What? It's on TikTok too. But uh, yeah, this mom is like cutting her daughter's hair. Her daughter is beautiful, by the way. And she's pretty much saying you're trying to put beauty before you brains and you're trying to rely on your beauty instead of following rules so she literally cuts all of her braids off at the 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 tip here at the scalp and she's like beauty will not last you and then she's like doing this on live and she says to the to the young girl I don't know I think she's like a teenager or something and she's like do you you know I love you right you know I'm only doing this because you need to understand consequences like it is so disgusting and like my people, not everything needs to be filmed and put on the internet. Certainly not child abuse. Certainly not you talking ish about your job. Certainly not talking ish about your profession. Like y'all, there's this one guy on TikTok that he does a lot of like messy stuff. And he's like, 
you made it public, so I'm going to make it publicer. You mm. don't need to make it public, y'all. It is yeah. it's a tragedy, a tragedy that's happening in these streets. That's that's the thing, because these, especially with the nurses, like they were all relatively young. Y'all know yeah. social media. Y'all know things go viral. Y'all know don't put that shit on the internet. It's the fact that they overlooked all of those, you know, brain cues saying, hey, don't put this on the internet means they didn't see anything wrong with it. You can talk shit about people, but don't do it online because then you're going to get fired from your job. Probably. There was another woman. She was like, I, my aches are when a racist patient comes in and doesn't let my coworker treat them. My ache is when uh, this man came in with a squatsica tattoo and I had to provide him stitches. These are actual icks that mm -hmm. will make anybody uncomfortable. Y'all literally said they asked me for a blanket. <laughs> they, or, they literally said my ick was they expected me to do my job as a nurse. This right. is upsetting to me. Like, <laughs> yeah, it was really bad. So oh, folks boy. on the internet, do better. We all can do better. But y'all certainly do your work and do it well. Do not complain Stop about Stop putting shit on the internet. Lives. Jesus. Anyway, anyway. well... What is, what are you looking forward to? What brought you joy in the last couple of weeks? Um, well, definitely my Ikea greenhouses <laughs> brought Obviously, me joy in yes. the last couple of weeks. And and seeing Lizzo, definitely oh, had yes. fun with her. Um, what else? What else? Just seeing friends. Like we went to a holiday thing yesterday. I made some hey. coquito. Oh, um, look at you. And I made a vegan coquito because my friend's vegan. So oh. I made two kinds. Um, I'm looking forward to, you know, seeing family for the holidays for better or for worse. Um, I was going to say, what? Uh, you're like, we're are you? Each other. <laughs> uh, That's what I was like, we're going to see each other. That's crazy. Um, no, wow. I, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to just the holidays. And as always happens to me around this time of year, I'm looking forward to next year. Like sometimes I just want to fast forward through the holidays because it's so much stimulation and I just get overwhelmed and I'm like, I just want to be settled into January already. I'm going to hate this when it happens, but for now that's where I am. How about you? What are you looking forward to and or what brought you joy? So many things brought me joy. I went to a, a white elephant party a couple of weeks ago. And when I tell you that was the funniest time because I haven't done one in a really long time. And I guess each one has different rules. But the amount of stealing that was happening. And then there was like one gift left. And my friend was just so cute about it. She was the host. And she was like, does not anybody want this one? Like, this is a beautiful gift. This is a, a beautiful home decor. And so we're like, okay, girl, what is it? And when she pulls it out, it's a map of the United States. And okay. holes all over it. And I'm like what is this? <laughs> and she's like, well, you actually used it to collect beer caps. Oh, yeah. And I was like, why would anybody want that? Like we were, it was so funny. The person who ended up with it actually doesn't drink. So I think it made oh, it funnier. No. And she was like, I was going to say, I'm pretty sure some of my friends have that because they're really into craft beer. Right. And I was like, it's cool if you're a drinker. Right. But if you're not, it kind of doesn't sit as well, but it was so funny. So that really just, just being around them, they were really fun and just like, you know, good energy type of people. So that was fun. Um, what I'm looking forward to, I'm actually going to travel for a quick weekend trip to DC, Baltimore, because yeah. my friend, yeah, my friend opened a um, empanada brick and mortar shop. And okay. so, yeah, he and I met on Clubhouse. So I was like, I'm going to go support you when you find, when you open your place. And so I'm going on Saturday. <gasps> That's so yeah. cool. Super exciting. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Oh, yay. Well, I'm glad we're we back, to baby. Chat. I know. We're we're back for a limited time probably. Uh, <laughs> just, just like the big rib, you better you better get it. Get it while it's hot. Get it while it's hot. Well, the McRib is back, baby. Baby. <sighs> Thanks for listening to Get Funny. We hope you laughed. But if you didn't. We did. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. 
we killed it. We crushed it. it.